the Denver Broncos offense is about to change. No, not because they got a quarterback who will slide right into whatever offense their new staff can dream up, but a quarterback who brings his own offense, one that works for him and him only. After Russell Wilson left Seattle, where he spent 10 seasons at an unlimited level, he provides the Broncos with an interesting dilemma. Seattle used just three offensive coordinators while he was there, but despite those coordinators coming from several different coaching trees, bringing several different styles of offense, they each ended up morphing into the only style Russ can run, a style that's made him one of the best QBs in the league, Pro Bowl after Pro Bowl, with some of the damnedest plays you'll ever see. However, that same style has also led to, at times, inconsistency, predictable play calling, and several early playoff exits. The Russell Wilson offense is a good one, it's just its ceiling is capped, at least thus far. What will his offense look like in Denver? Well, we first need to understand what it is, and it can really be broken down into three separate elements play-action option concepts, alert routes, and of course, run around all over the field and make everybody look silly. Each of these three tenants can all be linked to the same trait in the Russ offense, he's going to bomb you deep. He had the highest average depth of target last year at 10.2 yards per pass, and he had the second highest percentage of throws of 20 plus yards at 18%. He throws a beautiful arcing deep ball that plops into his receiver's hands like a pillow, and he can also gun the ball on a line 50 yards through the air. One of the ways he executes deep so well is play-action option concepts, the first tenet of the Russ offense. Last year, his completion percentage jumped more than 10% on play action, so not only does he create explosive offense with this play action, he's able to complete these passes at a much higher clip, specifically to Tyler Lockett. On this PA option concept they've run for years, the outside receiver runs a little hitch route to hold the corner and make sure he's not falling off deep, so Lockett can have the entire field to work with. Based on the leverage of the defender on him, plus the safety's leverage during the down, Lockett can run anywhere he wants, to the corner, to the post, flat across the field, the world is his oyster. Play action allows the quarterback more time to scan the field since the D-line has to play the run first, then Russ gets to reset the pocket, which gives him even more time and room to operate. When Lockett feels he has outside leverage from his man and that Bradley McDougald has his hips flipped to the corner, Lockett pushes to that corner, then breaks flat, and boom goes the dynamite. This isn't a new Seahawks concept by any means, they've run it forever. Lockett's been almost unstoppable with it, but the thing about running the same concept over and over, and in general overly relying on play action, is that it can't be the foundation of your offense, since if a defense takes away your primary receiver, there just isn't as many answers as a typical dropback pass. This is the first play of the game from Week 17, and the Lions have seen this a million times on tape. They know the main threat is Lockett, so they bracket him with their corner outside underneath and safety deep and inside to completely take him away. This is risky to pretty much ignore DK Metcalf outside leaving him one-on-one -on -one or anything Freddie Swain is doing at the bottom, and when you watch the safety, you see he doesn't bite outside because the corner is helping him there, so no matter how hard underneath Lockett cuts his route, he's not open at all. These play-action concepts are good at creating explosive plays and taking pressure off the offensive line, which Seattle certainly needed it, but can become a bit predictable later in the season if you're not running a ton of different stuff, and it can't be a foundational piece since if you're losing, everybody on defense knows you aren't running, so faking the run won't really work. But not to worry, because the second tenet of the Russ offense can work winning, losing, whenever, and that is the alert-style concepts. If you've been following this channel, I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but specifically these style of alert concepts have been popping up all over the league. Alert concepts are a great way to get your best receiver isolated one-on-one, -on -one, where of course the Hawks love making DK Metcalf that singled receiver, and by putting three receivers over here, the Seahawks have an alert side and a concept side. They're running a three-man arches concept, which is designed to stretch out certain defenders so Russ can go through his progressions to find the open man post-snap, but if pre-snap he sees DK is one-on-one, -on -one, or even right away post-snap he confirms, and this is key, there is just one high safety, then he'll know he's too far away to fly over the top of the go. Russ can ignore the arches concept and just throw to DK. 
What truly sets the Russ offense apart from some of the other teams in the league is that he's able to read both sides of the field. He can read out the alert side, the concept side, and the defense before and after the snap. Here's that same 3 by one formation, now with the tight end Gerald Everett, the ISO receiver. Quarterbacks are taught to read the contour of the safeties and defense, meaning the outside shape or form, and with all these defenders deep, this really only looks like it can be one kind of coverage, an all-out cover zero blitz, which means the Lions have one more rusher than the Seahawks can block, and there won't be any deep safeties. Russ gives a fake count and a couple lines jump forward, so now he's got a pretty good idea of what's going down. They're all coming. He knows that cover zero means one-on-one -on -one coverage and that each defender will be ultra-aggressive knowing an unblocked rusher is coming. So right as DK comes in motion, Russ checks to the concept here on the screen, and he knows he'll have to fade away from the extra rusher, knows the safety will jump the under part of DK's route since he has no help, and he lofts this in there just like… a pillow. Being able to hit not just the alert side, but also the concept side as well, shows defenses they can't cheat over either way, and Russ's abilities pre-snap are really what makes these type of concepts work. They have the same 3 by one formation with Lockett, now the isolated receiver, and Russ gets a man coverage tell when K1 Williams follows DK over to where, once again, they're running this same concept to the left. Russ is so good pre-snap because he can do insanely quick math. If the 49ers have three defenders for three receivers, the corner for Lockett, two safeties deep, and five guys on the line, that doesn't add up since every receiver needs to be accounted for. Either the mugged up linebacker is guarding Travis Homer, or the second safety is coming down and the Niners are sending five. It would be pretty hard for the backer to take Homer to the flat from so far inside, so Russ anticipates the 49ers are bluffing, are actually playing one deep safety, which now puts Lockett's alert route in play, and look at the location on this pass. The only issue with this area of Russ's game and offense is he gets a little go ball happy. This graph on the left represents the routes the Hawks ran last year, and then where Russ targeted. The red shows that he targeted outside at a way higher frequency than the rest of the league, and the blue in the middle shows he barely threw the ball there. His three most thrown routes are hitches, outs, and goes, which all operate outside the numbers, including the deep play-action crossers, and ignoring certain areas of the field can make you inconsistent and ineffective. If defenses can take away the outermost parts of the field and force Russ to throw inside, well, he's just not super comfortable doing that, and he never really has been. A lot of full field progression plays are designed to have a shorter concept to one side of the field and then an in-breaking route coming back over the middle if that short concept isn't open. So if the defense takes that concept away, but then you can't hit the in-breaker, you're gonna struggle. But that's not to say Russ can't throw it, he just doesn't like to. The Hawks have their same 3 by one formation, and the Lions are disguising this too high safety coverage and have this middle of the field robber player. They want their safeties to play over the top so they can have these two defenders play underneath to match Lockett and DK while pretending they're gonna blitz before the snap. Because Russ almost never targets the middle of the field, this robber defender pretty much ignores all this space and focuses all his attention on the three receiver side where Russ is looking. But instead of scrambling or throwing the ball away, he sits in the pocket and makes one of the hardest throws in football. In the past few weeks on this channel, we've watched Kyler, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson struggle to sit in the pocket and get through their reads instead of taking off and running, but not Danger Russ, the old vet. Showing defenses he can do this opens everything else up and keeps them honest. Hitting backside stuff opens up the front side, and hitting frontside stuff opens up the backside. The Hawks have flipped their formation but still have DK inside and lock it next to him, and the Lions have a nearly identical look with the same front and again two high safeties. These two are still matching DK and Lockett, but now the Lions have to account for Everett's backside dig since Russ just proved he could hit it. So this time they have to drop this safety down into that window, which means they can only have one high safety, so he has to rotate away from Lockett, and since the two on the ball defenders are matching again from this far away, the Lions have no chance in hell. The third and final tenet of the Russ offense is his ability to extend the play and make absolute magic happen. He is arguably the best at stopping, starting, shifting, moving to draw out the play until his guy comes open, and he can make every single throw he needs to, but 
That style is hard to replicate over and over, and against better defenses, namely playoff defenses in January, that magic has dwindled in the past half decade. He's only the second quarterback to ever get sacked 400 plus times in his first 10 seasons, and while a lot of that is on the Seahawks O-line being consistently, well, horrible, extending the play a lot leads to a ton of extra hits. Now that he's in Denver and becoming a part of their organization, the questions about what style of offense Nathaniel Hackett will install and run is a dead conversation. The Russ offense, no matter the coordinator, has eventually morphed into his same old style, and it's a style that has won a lot of games, gotten him to a lot of playoffs and Pro Bowls, but one that seems to, at times, be limited. He's arguably the best play-action passer in the league, but prefers concepts that can become predictable. He's the best deep passer in the league, but too often is targeting receivers outside the numbers, which can be taken away. And his extend the play ability is legendary, but is hard to repeatedly replicate. Targeting the middle of the field is a crucial part of any offense, and Russ can attack that area, I just don't think he's comfortable doing so. This next stint in Denver at 33 years young could be the move to take his career from really good to really great, but also has the potential for major disappointment. Russell Wilson is bringing his offense to Denver, but he needs to loosen the reins a bit to dip his toe into discomfort. If he can, as Mr. Unlimited himself says, let's ride. Let's ride.